Racing fans, welcome to episode 2 of the big Group 1 racing show for the racing season of 2016 slash 17. A massive episode coming up today as I preview two massive Group 1s in the Golden Rose Stakes and the Maccabi Diva Stakes. I'm looking forward to previewing these two races, so let's get straight in, starting with the Golden Rose. The Golden Rose Stakes is the first Sydney Group 1 race to be ran in the new racing season. And, uh, well, this race is for the three-year-olds. There is a crap load of money up for grabs because this race is the richest race of the Sydney Spring Racing Carnival. Now, let's get into having a look at the information. Of course, this race will be held on Saturday, the 10th of September, 3.10pm. It will be ran at Rose Hill Gardens, of course, this race available live to watch on 7-2 and Sky Racing 1. Let's have a look at the odds. So we start with the favourite, Omi Sword at $3.80. We then have Astern at $4.60. Divine Profit is at $4.80. Yankee Rose is at $8. Impending is at $12. Deron's at $13. Our Divino is at $16. Mediterranean is at $34. Throw Room is at $51. Good Standing is at uh, $51. Also, you then have uh, Nikitaz at $67. On $151, you have Oink, O'Reilly, Cyrus, and Chamalu, the New Zealand horse there. Those three are all on $151, as I mentioned. Okay, let's have a look at the field in depth. I start with... Uh, Number one, the second favourite of the race, and that is Astern, uh, coming in at $4.60, as I mentioned, coming out of Barrier 12. Won the run to Rose. Of course, a lot of these horses in this uh, race, the Golden Rose Stakes, actually ran in that race. So uh, uh, this horse has already beaten a lot of these uh, horses in this race uh, by just winning the run to over 1,200 metres. Of course, this race is a 1400 meter race uh, it hasn't actually uh, ran over that 14 or won over that 1400 meters before of course a lot of these horses probably haven't won over the 1400 meters but it's won four of its last five races in sydney so um it's definitely in there as a as a chance no question about it number two we have el divino a gay waterhouse trained uh horse coming out of barrier four came fourth in the run two Rose and uh, it actually uh, took the lead in the first part of the race but then uh, basically lost it down the straight and uh, just dropped off. Uh, the The barrier is a better barrier of course it came out of barrier one in that race I think the, the barrier four will be a, a better barrier uh, for this horse of course the uh, the speed map actually suggests that it will be out in front again just like it was in the run two to Rose so I expect this horse to probably take the lead early whether it's going to be in the top three or not I'm not quite sure it might just be in the top six it might have to settle for maybe fifth or sixth uh, but um, this is also another horse that hasn't won over the 1400 meters as you would expect number three we have good standing and uh, this horse is backed at a whopping $51 by the punters and rightly so it is coming into this race with some very poor form. It came ninth in the run two to Rose a couple of weeks ago. Fifth in the uh, series produced, which is not too bad, I suppose, out of 12 horses, but it would have liked a place. Uh, in the Golden Slipper, it was quite poor. Came 10th out of the 16 horses in the early stages of March. So I can't really see this horse getting up in the top six. I'd be surprised if it does. It's uh, really coming into this race with some poor form. Number four, we have Divine Profit. Uh, this horse is one of the chances to win this race. In fact, it's the third favourite in the odds. Not far behind Astern there on $4.80. Uh, it actually won uh, the Champagne earlier in the year. And in fact, it's won its last race uh, over the 1,300 metres. That was the up and coming just a, a few weeks ago. 
in uh, in August uh, at Royal Ramwick. It actually uh, came from behind, so it was at the back for most of the race, and then once it uh, approached the straight, it was able to get down the straight and actually win pretty superbly. It was an impressive race from this horse, and uh, I expect it to be possibly in the top three or four in this race. I think it's an impressive horse and one to look out for. The barrier is good. Barrier 10. One from barrier 9 in the up and coming. I expect it to be there at the end. Number five, we have Nikki Taz, who is uh, coming off a six-placed run in the run two to Rose a few weeks ago. Did well to uh, place six. This will be a much tougher race, though. And, uh, well, the punters, they're backing this horse uh, at $67, which is very large odds. It's coming out of barrier 8 and it's a Chris Waller trained horse. Throdham is uh, number 6 and backed by the punters at $51. And another gay Waterhouse trained horse coming out of barrier 13. Uh, come third in the up and coming a few weeks ago. Of course Divine Prophet won that race. We already established that. Uh, came first in the uh, the Rosebud at uh, Royal Ramwick early August. Uh, it's backed by the punters at $51, which I think is very large odds because I don't really see a problem with this horse. I think it's uh, it's in not too bad form. It's won uh, three of its last five races. Of course, this will be a tougher run, uh, but it uh, it did take the uh, the lead early in the, uh, the up and coming. So it might be another one of those horses that will be leading early, but then will won't be able to won't be able to cope down the straight. So uh, it's interesting. Uh, I I think this horse is maybe one of the roughies to look out for. It's at very large odds considering its form is not that bad. Number seven we have Im Pending, who is backed by the punters at twelve dollars. Came third in the run two to Rose and uh, actually uh, had to fight for third. There was a lot of other horses who were charging to it. And uh, this horse basically had to uh, fight them off. Of course, the uh, the first two horses to cross the finish line were quite far in front of him pending. Uh, only has a win range of 1,100 metres. It will find the uh, the 1,400 metre distance probably a challenge. Uh, but um, it has put together some okay performances. So it's definitely one of the chances, uh, maybe one of those ones to be in the top six. Of course, $12 is not too bad. Uh, for this horse. Number eight, we have Darian, who is uh, backed by the punters at $13. Uh, Tim Clark will uh, be riding this horse. In fact, uh, this horse came second in the up and coming, and uh, in fact, its uh, last uh, couple of trial runs at least have been pretty, uh, pretty impressive. So um, this horse uh, should be uh, should be one of the chances that you would say it is in good form going into this race. It will be uh, maybe in the middle early. Uh, barrier 7, uh, will be interesting to see if it can win from that. It actually came second from the same barrier in the up and coming. So an interesting horse, one to watch, maybe one of those roughies. Number 9, we have Mediterranean, who will be uh, jockeyed by Blake Sheen. Is coming out of barrier 5, came 5th in the uh, run to to Rose. I did look at its uh, last, its run in the run to to Rose. Of course, it came second in the Rosebud uh, early August, of course, throwing him did win that race. It doesn't look too bad over its trial runs. I think it's going to find the 1400 metres though a little bit uh, difficult in my opinion. Number 10 we have Oink back by the punters at uh, a whopping $151. Rightly so because this horse is not in correct form going into this race. It uh, hasn't, uh, hasn't ran at a competitive level uh, in competitive races a real lot over its uh, last few months. Uh, however, it has had a couple of um, competitive runs, some trial runs, came 10th in the series produced. It's going to find this uh, race very, very difficult, and especially uh, with its uh, poor form guide. At number 11, we have Chama Lu, who uh, is uh, coming off its only race ever with a win. It uh, did well to win that race, but um, yeah, only one run to its name. It uh, will find this uh, race difficult, I reckon. It is backed at a, about a whopping 151 bucks. So um, yeah, one run to its name compared to some of these horses who have, what, four, five, six, seven races to their name. It will find this uh, race quite difficult. Number 12, we have Yankee Rose, who is coming off uh, two trial runs where it came second and fourth. Before that it had a 161 day spell. It came first in the series produce and came second in the golden slipper. The only horse 
to have uh, won over the 1400 metres. In fact, it's the only horse to have ran over the 1400 metres and actually won. So um, this horse is in some great form going into this race. It's had a spell since its last competitive race, which was the series produced, but I think this horse is the one to beat. It's backed at about $8, which is remarkable considering uh, that this horse can run over that 1400 metres and has actually proved to do so. So. I, uh, I look forward to seeing this horse. I reckon this horse will definitely be in the top three. Number 13, we have Omni Sword, who is backed by the punters at $3.80. This is the favourite for this race. It is a Chris Waller trained horse. It's uh, been in some great form. Won its last race in the uh, Silver Shadow, which was at Royal Ramwick uh, just a few weeks ago on the 20th of August. Came ninth in the series, produced to Yankee Rose. Uh, I probably think this uh, horse will be in the top six. Uh, whether it can go that uh, extra distance to uh, match the 1,400 metres is um, unknown at this stage. Um, of course, it's already had a, uh, a run over the 1,400 metres and couldn't uh, win it. So that was uh, in the series produced. So that's the question I pose to this horse. But it's definitely one of those chances. Of course, it's the favourite because it's in some great form. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether it can go that uh, all the way to that 1,400 metres and beat uh, Yankee Rose, who beat it uh, in the series produce. And finally, we have number 14, O'Reilly Cyrus, who in its last five races has come second, third, fifth, seventh, and first. Uh, a lot of them were trial runs, so it hasn't really ran a real competitive race like this for a while, or if, well, probably not forever, to be honest. So... Uh, I think this uh, horse will find this race quite difficult. Okay, time now to get into my tips. I start with my uh, winner of this race, and that is uh, number four, Divine Provet. Uh, this horse is backed by the punters at $4.80, as I've already mentioned. It's posed a good barrier, and I really liked its last run in the up-and-coming. It won that race over that 1,300 metres. I back it to go the extra 100, and I really liked how it uh, just stormed home in the straight. It was just, it was probably Jatakwa like to be honest. Uh, and that's what it looked like anyway. I know that's probably uh, not, that's probably a bit of an over exaggeration, but it, it really did power through the straight and did very, very well to win that race. So I think it's going to be the one to beat. I think it will win this race. And uh, I think that uh, Yankee Rose will come second. Uh, it will. It will be definitely up there, and it will be a close one, I think, between Divine Prophet and uh, also Yankee Rose. But uh, Yankee Rose, uh, of course, coming off uh, two trial runs. This is its first competitive race since the series produced, and that's why I'm putting it at second. But it does very well over the 1,400 metres. And then third, I've gone the favourite, Omi Sword. I just question whether it can go that extra that extra distance, and cons considering it was... Uh, only ninth in the uh, the series produced, which was over 1,400 metres, says to me that it may not be able to um, it may not be able to win over this distance uh, yet. So that's why I'm putting it at third. But I, I, yeah, I think it will be up in the top three. No question about it. It should get out of the blocks, and it should be at about the mid range section of of the field in the early parts. And for my roughie of the race, I've gone Thronum. Now this horse is backed at a whopping $51, and uh, but I feel like the, the punters have made this horse out to, to be like a, a real in poor form horse when in fact it's uh, in its last five races it's come third, first, second, first and first. So it's placed in its last uh, five runs and uh, I think this horse is going to be one to look out for. I think this horse could possibly end up in the top six. It came third in the up and coming which was quite good from... Uh, from a throne and point of view, and uh, well, a gay waterhouse trained horse. I think uh, this horse is one to look out for. It's my roughie of the race. Okay, on to the next race we go, and this is the Maccabi Diva Stakes at Flemington. This is over 1600 metres, of course, uh, will be ran on Saturday, 4 10 pm, and will be uh, on uh, racing.com 7 2 and Sky Racing 1 for everyone to watch if you're not going to be at the racetrack on Saturday. This is a wait for age contest and it's of course named after the champion of three Melbourne Cups and that is Maccabi Diva. So let's have a look at the field. Blackheart Bart is uh, the favourite uh, as you'd expect at $2.35. Palantino is the next best at $7.50. You then have uh, Rising Romance 
at $9. Uh, our Ivanhoe is uh, back and is backed by the punters at $12. You then have uh, Tarzino also at $12. Our Fine Eagle is at $15 as well as Entirely Platinum. Hiyoshi is at $20. Sophia Rose is at $31. You then have Jackanaut who is at twenty uh, $26. And then Happy Trails at $34, Prince of Penzance at $67, and then we finally have Ayers Rock, who is backed at a whopping $201. Number one, we have Prince of Penzance. This is its first race back at Flemington after its Melbourne Cup win, its famous Melbourne Cup win, I should add. Uh, Hasn't ran over the 1,600 metres much, although it did run uh, in May over this distance in the Raleigh at Morfordville, came second. But uh, it will find this race tough, of course. Uh, this race is uh, definitely more competitive and uh, more at a bigger standard than the Raleigh is. So uh, backed uh, by the punters at $67. Uh, doesn't have Michelle Payne on board, actually has uh, John Allen on board. Might find this race difficult in my opinion. Number two, we have an oldie in Happy Trails, backed by the punters at $34. Is coming off a much needed 134 day spell, of course, after the Australian Cup and, and uh, even after the Queen Elizabeth, you can see that this horse really needed a bit of a spell. Uh, its first race uh, back will be tough, in my opinion. Um, of course, it came fifth in that Queen Elizabeth uh, run, and then the Australian Cup. I did see it run in the Australian Cup live at Flemington in March, and it came seventh and uh, in the Peter Young uh, last uh, last February, and also came seventh in that race as well. So, first race back, we'll find it tough. I reckon it will be at the back. Field. Number three, we have the favourite, Blackheart Bart. I'll tell you what, this horse is in impressive and solid form. Won the Memsey Stakes just two weeks ago. Uh, can it run over the 1,600 metres, though? That is the question coming into this race. It's actually never ran over that 1,600 metre distance. It's, of course, a six-year-old horse, and uh, it's never run over that distance. So it's going to be interesting to see whether it will uh, be able to cope over that uh, extra... 200 meters from the Memsey Stakes win, but I back I back this horse to do it. I think this horse is the one to beat in this race. Of course, Damon Oliver's on board instead of uh, Brad, and it's coming out of Barrier Eight, and it's won from Barrier Eight before. So Flemington, it's the big stage, of course, and uh, well, the question is, can it run over that 1600 meter distance? I think it will do well to do so. After a 112 day spell, Al Ivanhoe is back into some racing and uh, its last uh, race was actually a win in the Dubedin Cup. That was uh, early or late May I should say. And uh, But its winning range however is uh, 2,000 metres to uh, 2,400 metres. So is this horse better suited to those larger distances? I think it is, but it's back by the punters at $12.00. And it came fifth over the 1,800 metres in the uh, the Peter Young. So one to look out for, but I question whether it can go back to the uh, the 1,600 metres and do well. Number five, we have Jackanort Bay, who came second in the Lawrence and uh, came eighth not long ago in a race at Mooney Valley. Of course, that was uh, last weekend uh, with Damien Lane on board. Has Nicholas Hill on board for this run and in fact his last race uh, which it came eight in uh, that was actually over the 1600 meters so um this will be a tough race i reckon number six we have entirely platinum who came third in the lawrence in its last race backed by the punters at 15 dollars can uh, run okay over the 1600 meters but in its last race in the autumn carnival early march in the blammy that was uh at Flemington, it came fifth over the 1600 metres, so um, it could be there in the top six, I reckon. It's definitely a chance. I do like its uh, its um, running form over this distance. I think it could do well. Coming in at number seven, we have Hiyoshi, backed by the punters at $20. Craig Williams will be aboard this horse. It uh, came first uh, in the Blammy over the 1600 metres with Craig Williams on board and then its next race in the Doncaster it actually came eighth although Craig Williams wasn't aboard the horse that day and then of course in the Memsey it came seventh out of the 12 horses so I think this horse is going to be a little bit of a chance I think especially with Craig Williams on board and um, I think the 1600 metres will suit. I think we should uh, be watching out for this horse because um, 
It's one of the roughies, I think. Number eight, we have our fine Eagle, who is coming out of barrier 10, came six in the Memsey. In fact, uh, ran in this same race last year, the Maccabi Diva Stakes, and comes six in this race. So it's ran over the 1,600 metres uh, before. It has a winning range of uh, about uh, 1,100 to 1,800 metres. So we know it can uh, win in between those distances so the 1600 meters will suit it's uh, definitely a chance to maybe get in the top six this uh, horse it uh, looks okay it'll be out of the blocks early i reckon as we have a look at the uh, as i have a look at the speed map he actually uh, will be uh, about mid-range in the in the field early on so um expect this horse to be up there number nine we have tarzino who of course won the rose hill guineas this year normally likes the 1600 meters and should be in the top three in my opinion of course eighth in the memsey uh, two weeks ago and actually came second uh, in the australian guineas from barrier four it's in barrier four in this race so it might just do well from the barrier that it's coming out of number 10 we have palantino who ruined my trifecta two weeks ago in the memsey stakes i actually tipped it to come second and it uh, disappointed me and come fifth, but um, I think it will like the 1600 metres a bit better. In fact, it likes Flemington better. Flemington uh, seems to be a place where this horse does okay in. In fact, it does well at this uh, at this racetrack. In fact, in its last race there, which was uh, the Australian Guineas, it actually won over that 1600 metres and came second also in the race before that in the CS Hayes. So, um, Mark Sarra on board will know what to do in this race. I think this uh, horse will be up there, possibly in the top five Maybe the top three. It is a good horse, this one. And even though it was a disappointing run last week, you can't rule this... Uh, or two weeks ago, sorry. Uh, you can't rule this horse out. Number 11, we have Ayers Rock, who is uh, down the bottom of the field when it comes to odds in this race. I think this uh, race is going to be quite tough for this horse. It's... Uh, its form guide doesn't look uh, quite pretty. In fact, it uh, looks quite ugly in my opinion. And uh, its uh, last competitive races uh, in the uh, in the autumn time of this year weren't quite great. So um, also it has a win range of uh, 1,800 to 2,000 metres. So uh, might not be able to win over this distance. Rising Romance comes in at number 12, second in the Memsies. I was really surprised about that. I thought it would be at the back end of the field, but it wasn't that day. It surprised me, and in fact, it uh, ruined my trifecta because I, I wanted Palantino to get in there. But anyway, um, it was, um, yeah, it had a good run that day in the Memsie, and uh, But the thing about this one is that it hasn't uh, it hasn't ran over the, the 1,600 metres for a while, so that's the query for me. Damien Lane on board also, of course, uh, drew, uh, drove this horse to a second place in the Memsie. Coming out of barrier two, uh, might not do so well out of this barrier, but uh, you can't rule this horse out. It's definitely uh, one of the chances. Could place, could get in the top six. It is back. Uh, it is uh, yeah backed by the punters at nine dollars. And finally, we have Sophia Rose, who I believe is a uh, New Zealand horse who uh, came in to the uh, the Memsey Stakes with a very good form guide. You might remember two weeks ago on uh, episode one of the big Group One racing show, I went through the the form guide for this horse, and it was first, second, first, first. So that's uh, three win wins in its last four races. But it came tenth in the Memsey and didn't do so well, of course, uh, in those races uh, that it actually won was over the 2,000 metres. So coming into that shorter distance of 1,400 metres, it seemed to struggle. So I think it's going to struggle in this race, 1,600 metres. I can't see how this horse is going to... Um, how it's going to get into the top five or six in the uh, in the Maccabi Diva Stakes, I, I don't think it's going to really be suited to the 1,600 metres. Will it be suited to the Flemington track also? I'm not quite sure. Okay, time now to have a look at my tips for the Maccabi Diva Stakes for 2016. Of course, this race is at Flemington on Saturday. I start with my winner, and that is Black Heart Bart. Did so well to win the Memsey two weeks ago has won some great races to the goodwood to also the victoria handicap this horse has got it all and i think the uh, the extra 200 meters from the memsey will suit this horse and i think it will go on to win the maccabi diva stakes whether it's easy or not i don't think it will be in my opinion i think it will be uh, it will be challenged and i reckon it will be challenged by the uh, the horse who is uh, trained by the same trainer as 
um, as Black Heart Barton, that is Palantino, who was backed by the punters at $7.50. Of course, like I mentioned, it ruined my trifecta. It didn't come second, it came uh, fifth, uh, where I actually predicted it to come second. But uh, like I mentioned, it likes Flemington. Uh, it looks like it likes Flemington. And uh, first in the Australian Guineas, that was the last time it ran at Flemington over the 1600 metres. I reckon this horse is going to challenge Black Heart Barton. I reckon it's going to be a real challenge down the straight between these two horses. So Palantino is second for me. And then finally third, I've gone Tarzino, of course. Rose Hill Guineas winner uh, earlier in the year. Eighth in the Memsey was a bit disappointing, of course. Uh, actually didn't have a trial run before that Memsey. So maybe that was the mistake that Mick Price made. Of course, the weather did play an impact in the trial run being, um, I guess, cancelled. Uh, like I said uh, before, normally likes the 1600 metres, and I think it will be in the top three. I think it will come third. It might challenge uh, Palantino and Blackheart Bart. In fact, I probably expect it to, but um, I think those two horses will be just a little bit too strong for Tarzino. And then finally, my roughie of the race, I've gone. He or she, backed by the punters at $20. Uh, looking at this horse, I thought, um, with Craig Williams on board, it seems to do well. In fact, uh, uh, the last time that Craig Williams uh, rode this horse, like I mentioned before, he actually won, and that was uh, in the Blammy at Flemington, early March. So I think this horse, uh, with Craig Williams on board, is a real sneaky chance of getting up and winning. And uh, well, if it does, it would be a very successful roughie of the race because uh, the punters aren't giving this much of a chance. It's backed at a whopping $20. Uh, I tell you what, worth putting a dollar each way bet on because uh, it's a sneaky chance in my opinion. And that brings this episode of the big Group 1 racing show to a close. Thank you very much for clicking on and watching this episode. Of course, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Of course, I not only do uh, horse racing content, I also do AFL content from the Ultimate AFL Show to After the Dogs Raw. Of course, finals are now upon us, so go check out those shows as well. Now, the next episode of the big Group 1 racing show is coming up next Friday, the 16th of September. I'll be previewing the George Main Stakes. So, uh, that's a Sydney uh, race, of course, so I'll be uh, previewing that next week. So until then, I'm Jacob. Enjoy the Golden Rose and Maccabi Diva Stakes. Until next week, bye for now.